So the next part that we want to be able to do is to be able to go from polar equations to Cartesian equations. And actually, these tend to be trickier than going the other way around from Cartesian to polar. So we're starting with the slightly trickier one. Now, what I've put here inside the tip is that I need you to use these tools that you've got. And you need to have these tools like ready to go in your mind, fully memorized to be able to answer these questions. So it says you can use the fact that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. We know that, that the x coordinate is r cos theta and the y coordinate is r sine theta. These two things we've actually got here and here, x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta, they are actually something we've seen before. Where do you think we've seen these before in normal maths? How might we describe these pair of equations that we've got here? They are to do with resolving vectors, but actually I was thinking of, no, I was actually thinking of parametric equations. These are actually a pair of parametric equations, but these are the specific pair of parametric equations that will create polar, polar graphs that we've got here. So uh, this first one that we've got, we've got that r is equal to 5. Well, I know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if I square both of these here, I would get that r squared is 25. And then I could replace r squared with x squared plus y squared. So this tells me that r equals 5 is x squared plus y squared equals 25. Now, you can obviously see the diagram. It's a circle with radius 5. We know it's a circle with radius 5 because of this. But this one, why does that represent a circle? Because there's no angle. Yeah, because well, there's no angle. But it's just telling you that the length of the, the distance from the pole is 5. So you just get this kind of thing, that everywhere in all those directions, the length is five. What does that remind you of with complex numbers and argand diagrams? Loci. With loci, where you would say like the modulus of the complex number is five. We know that that represents a circle with radius five. So it's all connected back together now. Okay, then this next one that we've got down here, we've got r equals two plus cos two theta. And it makes this kind of weird, like almost like binoculars kind of shape that we've got. So in order to do this, I can't do anything with the cos 2 theta because my things are only to do with cos theta and sine theta that I've got here. So what do you think I should do to the cos 2 theta? Use the, use the double angle formula. OK, so if I use the double angle formula on this, which one do you want to use? It doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to go with actually just the standard version. I'm just going to go with the cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And we're trying to force these kinds of things that we've got here, OK? We're trying to force these things to come up. So I've got a cos squared theta, and I've got a sine squared theta. What do you think I would like to multiply this and this by so that I could then start doing a substitution using the tip? What do I want to have in front of cos squared or sine squared? I don't want just r. I want. I want r squared in front of both of them. If I have r squared cos squared alpha, I can then say that it's x squared. And if I have r squared sine squared theta, I can say that it's y squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply the whole thing by r squared. So I'm going to have r cubed equals 2r squared plus r squared cos squared alpha, sorry, theta minus r squared sine squared theta. And now I can replace absolutely everything that I've got there, OK? I'm going to leave this bit for a second, because I think that bit's slightly trickier. 2r squared is 2 x squared plus y squared. r squared cos squared is plus x squared. And r squared sine squared is y squared. And what's r cubed going to be? How would I find r cubed if I know that r squared is x squared plus y squared? Nope. Power of 3 over 2. If you think that r squared is x squared plus y squared, r would be x squared plus y squared to the half. So r cubed would be x squared plus y squared to the 3 over 2. So we then get x squared plus y squared 
whoops, sort that out, to the power of 3 over 2, like this. Not very nice looking, is it? Look how simple the polar coordinate is for this really no interesting looking curve, and then the Cartesian one is a complete mess. But we could probably do just a little bit of tidying up here. So we get x squared plus y squared to the power of 3 over 2. We've got 2x squared plus x squared. That's 3x squared. And 2y squared minus y squared is just y squared like this. And I'm not going to do anything more to that. I'm just going to leave it in that particular form that we've got. So the strategy was make this cos 2 theta. First of all, we need to make the argument match the standard polar tools that we have, which is just theta. We then had that they were both squared, so they required an r squared with them in order to be able to change them to the x and y's. And then we also needed to be careful of when we had r cubed that we didn't just replace it with, well, whatever we thought it was. We had to carefully build that up so that we came to this. So this Cartesian one is not pleasant. That's why if we want to do anything to these kinds of shapes, we would never deal with the Cartesian version. We would deal with the polar version. And if you wanted to find the area of this shape, you wouldn't want to integrate this, but you probably would be happy to integrate this kind of thing. It's going to be a bit better to do, OK? So we're going to, you just leave it like that. Yeah, they're often, the point of these is they're often not going to be very nice. They're not going to end up looking very pleasant. So again, we've got an issue here with this sine 2 theta, so that we're going to say that r squared is equal to, I'll replace that with, to sine theta, cos theta. What do I need the sine theta, cos theta to have with them that they don't have? R. So what do I need to multiply both sides by? By what, sorry? I think I need to multiply by more than R. I need to multiply by R squared, because that needs an R and that needs an R. So I'm going to multiply by R squared to get R to the power of 4, 2R sine theta, R cos theta. Do you notice how I've multiplied by R squared? but I've multiplied by the r in separate places to be able to build up this chunk, which is going to be y, and this chunk, which is going to be x. r to the power of 4 is what? x squared plus y squared squared. And then 2 r sine theta r cos theta, that is just going to be 2. The r cos theta is x, and the r sine theta is y. So we get x squared plus y squared squared equals 2xy. And it creates that kind of tilted figure, figure of eight kind of thing. It looks to me like a racing track kind of thing you might see in like Mario Kart or something. So we're now going to just do this last one, which is the r squared equals sine of theta plus pi over 4. What do I need to apply on the right-hand side? Addition formula. So we're just going to say r squared. And you'll see why I don't replace the r squared with x squared plus y squared straight away. I kind of want to get everything looking like it should and then doing the substitution. So the sine of theta plus pi over 4 is what, Haroon? Sine theta cos pi over 4, yeah. OK, and we know that cos and sine of pi over 4 are 1 over root 2. So. That's r squared, 1 over root 2 sine theta plus 1 over root 2 cos theta. And then what else do I need to multiply everything by? R squared. r squared, so that I have an r here and an r here. And I'm also going to multiply by root 2, because I don't like these in the denominator. Why? If I times it by r, what would I have? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, yes. Are, sorry, yeah, you're right, it's r. This time we, d we multiply by r squared because it was, it was one thing. Yeah. This one, they're two separate terms. Yeah, my mistake. So we're just going to multiply by r, and I'm also going to multiply by the root 2 as well. So I get 2r cubed equals r sine theta plus r cos theta. So that's going to be root 2 x squared plus y squared to the power of 3 over 2 equals x plus y. So really, there's not like any kind of set things you need to do with this, other than the fact you need to have, I, if I was doing this question, I would write down these three things next to my question, 
and I would know that those are my building blocks, okay? And it makes, you have to somehow get it in that form, and you're allowed to do whatever, within reason, whatever you want to get it in that form, okay? Um, I would write them down so that I, my, visually for me, it helps me if I can see those when I'm doing the question. Yeah, you memorize them, but still to have them visually like written like, right next to the question is gonna be really helpful. And so this one creates this kind of like two sort of, they look like two like, mitosis. like a mitosis. So this is great, it could be mitosis. It could be two like elastic balls colliding and they're kind of squishy, something like that. So that kind of leads on to this next slide, which is just why is the polar form so useful? And so I've said that this spiral pattern has the very simple polar equation of r equals theta. But before we talk about this Cartesian form, why, why is this r equals theta, this spiral pattern that we've got here? And this is going from theta equals 0 all the way to 8 pi. If r is equal to theta... Why is this r equals theta, this curve? What does the, the r part, what does the r part mean? It means, it means how far from the origin. It means, yeah, this is the distance from the pole, and this is the angle. So it's saying that how far away it is from the pole, not the pulp, is the angle that it's at. So to begin with, the angle is zero, so the distance is zero. Up here, what do you think the distance from the pole is at this point? Pi over two. Pi over two. Then it's pi. Uh, three pi over two. Two pi. Three pi. Four pi. Five pi. Six pi. Seven pi. Eight pi. Okay, so that's why it's just a really simple spiral curve that we've got here. Because at each point, what its distance from the origin is, is also the angle that it has been winding around as well. And so it doesn't just have to be between pi and, sorry, between zero and two pi, or minus pi and pi. It can be whatever range of values that you want it to be. So I've said here that in Cartesian form, this one happens to be the square root of x squared plus y squared equals arc cos of x over the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is obviously terrible to work with if you wanted to do any kind of math to it. But look at that. And that's like beautifully simple that a spiral is just r theta. Cartesian is not fit for purpose when we're thinking about doing polar. Okay, Cartesian is not good. <laughs>